about the delay. Good afternoon. Today we are excited to have with us Megan Needle, who will be presenting a case study on the role of the community health worker in managing pests for clients with asthma. She will be speaking about her experience as a community health worker and a situation she worked on where a family was experiencing negative health impacts due to pests and a pest infestation in their home. As a community health worker, Megan provides direct services to individuals and families struggling to manage health conditions by linking them to resources, delivering health education, and helping them build self-management skills. She has worked in the community on issues such as lead poisoning prevention, healthy homes, diabetes, and hypertension. Megan is passionate about delivering high-quality community health service services in locations that are familiar and comfortable to her clients. Megan is from St. Paul. She holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Biology from St. Cloud State University and has completed her Community Health Worker Certificate at Northwest Technical College. Megan is bilingual in Spanish and English, and her professional experiences include President of Community Health Worker Services at Community Health Worker um, CHW Solutions, serving as Director of Community Health Programs at a local community-based organization, and as community-led educator. Without further delay, I will hand this over to Megan so that she can tell us more about her work and how, in her role as a community health worker, she and others have collaborate efforts to improve the health and well-being of the family and multiple family members diagnosed with asthma. Megan. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, everybody. So nice to be here. Sorry about our little technical glitch, but we're all good now. Um, so if anything else happens and all of a sudden you can't hear us, just chat in and um, then we will know, okay? So thank you. So today we're going to chat a little bit about the role of the CHW, um, working in with a family that had um, cockroach issues and kind of go through the steps of how we found the family and what did we do with the family and how we looped in other providers and other resources that were needed to, um, to help this family. Okay, so a little bit of background. Um, the first point of contact was a health fair after mass. Um, there were probably about 30 other groups there, and um, the mom had gone to another booth and asked if there was anyone who helped out with cockroaches and they were sent over to my, to my boot, um, which is kind of funny. Um, so she came up to me. She was very ashamed of having roaches. She didn't know what to do. She was desperate. She was upset. She had kids with asthma, and she also lived with her sister and her sister's family, and her sister also had asthma. So multiple people in the home with asthma, they owned their own home, and um, this is a single family dwelling. They all lived together. Um, there had been, in the recent past, multiple hospitalizations, including ambulance transport, and again, they had a terrible problem with cockroaches. So in this particular case, um, the CHW scope, we're working on health education, we're working on self-management skills, resource connections, and using the pathways to organize our CHW work. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with the pathways, they're, they're, it's an evidence-based um, group of pathways that a CHW can use to organize themselves and organize their service delivery. So as you can see here in the bullet points, these were the main pathways that were used and would be used um, you know, in a case like this, the education pathway is the one that I have up on the screen, and that is this all-encompassing health education pathway that you can use to, you know, work with families on a variety of chronic conditions. This particular one happened to be asthma. Um, if you have any questions about the pathways, there, I have a lot of information. I'd be happy to chat with you about how we use them and how we kind of move through our scope and our daily service delivery with patients um, and clients using the pathways. So 
So during the first in-home visit, there were some various, you know, obvious observations that there was a cockroach problem. Um, usually when I will go into a home, there's a period of time when we're doing sort of this preliminary education with the family, learning about what's there, and we're doing this sort of preliminary investigation to see exactly what type of pest they have. In this particular case, um, there was absolutely no doubt that there, were, there was a significant cockroach infestation. Um, they were visible during the day. They were actually on my shoes, and one had crawled up the outside of my pants. And so there was no doubt, okay, yep, we are dealing with a, a very developed cockroach infestation. Um, the kitchen seemed to be ground zero for a lot of reasons. You probably know why. Um, lots of food. There's kids. There was food that was left out. Kids come home after school. They have a quick snack. You know, kids are kids. And um, unfortunately, that just kept feeding this infestation. Um, the family had already paid for two pest control treatments to a pest company that they called. Unfortunately, they paid cash, and they did not have receipts. So this um, treatment, all it really did was just activate asthma. Um, they did, they sprayed a couple times, but it wasn't enough, and it wasn't a deep enough treatment to be able to um, make a difference in the home. It just killed the live cockroaches that were there at the time of spraying. Um, the family was using a ton of Raid and other products in their home, anything they could get at Menards or Home Depot that had a picture of a cockroach and it said the word cockroach, they were trying it. Raid was one of the biggest, I mean, we must have seen a dozen cans of Raid kind of in different parts of the home and they would spray the little tubes as they saw them. There was minimal knowledge of environmental triggers. They didn't understand in the very beginning how the home and things that were happening in the home were connected to um, the asthma exacerbation. There were uninsured adults in the home. Again, there was food consumed and stored in multiple areas. There was a family that lived upstairs and a family that lived downstairs. So even though it was a single family dwelling, they created a little kitchen area. They put in a sink and some cupboards and some things upstairs to accommodate some food and snacks for the kids that lived upstairs. And um, they would cook in the main floor. They would take their dinner upstairs, and they would all eat upstairs. Um, and that just created another area for the cockroaches to be. Um, there was also clutter on the second floor, a lot of stuff that was packed in bags and um, kind of sitting around. It was obvious that professional assistance was needed for this infestation. Um, this was absolutely beyond my scope of anything I could even do for the family. So um, in the social determinants that we worked on, I worked on some food insecurity issues. There was minimal access to, to health care for some of the family members. Lack of transportation for clinic appointments, um, and that led to significant missed appointments. Um, and the family was low income. So the left side here, you can see the picture of a, um, you can see the picture of a light plate. This was an actual, this was the light plate from the kitchen. It was behind the counter by the sink. Um, so we took it off and you can see that there's obvious signs of cockroaches going there. So we knew absolutely, I knew beyond my scope, I don't know what to do, but I know somebody who does know what to do. Um, for those of you who know Dr. Kells from the University of Minnesota Entomology Department, he's an angel. He's amazing. Um, he is my go-to guy if I have questions about pests, if families call me with questions about pests. He's so knowledgeable about urban pest management, and I knew that I needed to start with him to find out, okay, you know, what can we do here? So I gave him a call. Um, I let him know kind of the situation. I let him know the observations. I let him know that the family has already paid out of pocket to treat twice, and they're, you know, they're still basically in the same boat that they were before they were treating. And um, luckily, at that point, he had some funding to be able to do some 
in the community teaching for his students. And he very graciously agreed to help, um, help us out. So it was wonderful. He's great. Um, so identification of the true infestation, guidance on treatment, and this ongoing education piece is kind of what we needed from him. Um, and he obviously knew exactly what to do. So we all decided, hey, we're going to meet as a team. We're going to go, and we're going to help this family. So the family, of course, in all CHW work, the family, the patient, the client, whatever you call them, they're kind of the epicenter of this spiral team that we are working on. So we engage the clinical team, we engage pest resources, food connections, transportation, one of the local healthy homes programs, and low-cost low clinical services for the family members that were uninsured. So we, we had an initial in-home visit with the entomology team. They spent about two hours talking to the parents, gathering information on the background of the family, information about how the infestation started. This family has lived in this house for almost 15 years, and they did not have cockroaches the whole time. So they talked a lot about how they think it started, when did they start seeing the cockroaches, what have they done so far to manage the cockroaches, uh, they inspected every single nook and cranny, every room, every closet, every nook of the basement. They inspected everything looking for signs of cockroaches. That particular day, uh, we placed 35 sticky traps, and that was going to be this kind of first phase of identification to find out where's the main concentration of cockroaches, you know, where are they, what are they big, little, a mixture, um, and then we also set the date for the first treatment. So my role as a CHW kind of leading up to the first treatment was to take the messages that the entomology team had given the family during the first meeting, reinforce those messages, as well as make an action plan to get things done. There were very specific things that needed to be done before the team could come in. So that first set of about six bullet points there, those are things that the family was supposed to do um, so that the team could come in, set up their stuff, and um, you know, start the treatment. And as you can see, some of this stuff, when people are working full time, cleaning out all your kitchen cabinets, your cupboards, your storage areas, your pantries, washing everything down, placing things in bins, placing things in bags and moving it from the kitchen into the living room once everything is cleaned up, um, that's going to take some time. So my role as a CHW was to sit down with the family and say, okay, let's plan this together. Let's see what does your time look like? What do you need to do? What supplies do you need? Um, and we set up a, a plan with the adults in the home and some of the older kids to be able to help get this piece done. Um, the family also needed to be relocated for the first day of treatment. So we assisted them in getting that set up. They went to the Mall of America for the day. Um, we had a con couple conversations with the primary care providers and the clinical teams. They had not told the clinical teams about the cockroaches in their home. Uh, in their home. They did not really talk about anything environmental with the clinical team. And um, this family felt a lot of shame about having cockroaches, and they didn't want to tell anybody. And so reaching out to the clinical teams was a big deal for them. And um, so we kind of reinforced this conversation of getting back to clinical teams and pulling them into the circle and making sure that the family is being honest with them about what's going on in their home. Dr. Kells wanted to make sure that the clinical teams knew that chemicals were going to be sprayed, diatomaceous earth was going to be um, pumped into behind um, like the wall outlets and the light sockets. So he wanted to make sure that they knew that. So that if something happened to this family or one of the asthmatic members of this family, the clinical teams are aware, oh, they just had a treatment. So we did some time, took some time to talk to all the providers for the kids and for the asthmatic mom. 
Uh, again, we had ongoing conversations with the family about use, the use of diatomaceous earth and the other products that the entomology team will be using. So, you know, one of the things is, you know, making sure that they're not touching stuff. They're not, that the, you know, they're not using, or they're not putting plates back out where it has been sprayed. So we had these ongoing conversations about potential risks, the warning signs of being exposed to diatomaceous earth or some of the chemicals, and again, the action plan and communication with the clinical providers. So this piece went on for about a month, kind of really close communication with the family. The other thing that we talked about a lot that I really focused on with the family was things that they're going to need to continue to do on a daily basis to keep their home safe. So there's a common um, disinfectant that a lot of families use. Uh, it's very colorful. And I've seen families actually boiling this disinfectant to get the fragrance into their home. This family was not boiling it. This family had it sitting out like in bowls. Um, it's very, very fragrant, fragrant. There's a lot of different fragrances. It's very widely used. And so we really, I mean, I talked with them and did a lot of work about let's not use this anymore. Let's use something that's safer. Let's figure this out. Let's see what, why are you using this, kind of talking through, having those conversations with them and teaching them about safe cleaning for people with asthma. Um, also working with them to get containers for their food, working with the kids about cleaning up after coming home from school. In the future, these are going to be things that are needed, going to be needed to do on every on a daily basis and getting the kids involved in the routine. Um, they didn't have a garbage can, so they were using cub bags that were just kind of connected to the hinge of the door, the side of the cupboard. Um, food scraps were going in there as well as paper trash. Um, they had a dog, and so the pet food was just being stored in an open bag, and they did not have a, have a vacuum. We were able to get them a vacuum, taught them how to use that vacuum, showed them where to use it, how to use it. Um, that was a big thing that Dr. Kells emphasized as well, is that vacuuming is so important. Okay, so use of sticky traps. Sticky traps are such an amazing invent, in, inter, invention when you're trying to help a family either identify if they have a pest issue or as the, in this case, this was able to tell us how cockroaches are responding to treatment. So if you look at this, you can see multi-generational roaches on there. You can see big roaches, little roaches, and itty bitty, bitty bitty baby roaches. If you look up, in the left-hand corner, you'll see a roach that's kind of hit, like the face or the head is off of the sticky part. And you'll see that that roach's wings are starting to curl. And Dr. Kells was able to give us these tips. So if you see that their wings are starting to curl, that is a response to the treatment. We know that that roach is dying. Um, so what I did was I would taught the family how to recognize that, and they would take pictures of their sticky traps and text the pictures to me, um, and then I would be able to talk with Dr. Kells about what they're seeing and kind of how we're moving through the treatment phases. So some of the key messages um, that were really important that we emphasized is that this process takes time. The family was, you know, at their wit's end with this cockroach issue, and we wanted to make sure they understood. In order to do this safely, this process is going to take time, and there's going to be multiple steps, and that is just the way it works. But as Dr. Kell says, this process works, and it did. And it's multiple steps. It's different things. It's this whole IPM, like this whole circle of approach, um, and it worked. And it was great, but it did take time, and the family had to be patient. 
Um, the importance of consistency every single time. Every single time you cook, you have to do these steps. It has to be clean. Um, food has to be put away. That consistency part is so key. Um, family as a team, getting the kids involved, educating the kids so that they can understand, hey, this is what's going on. This is how we need you guys to help. Um, frequent in-home visits and check-ins via phone. So I visited the family almost always on a weekly basis. Sometimes we checked in on the phone. They would send me those pictures by text. So we were in fairly close communication about how things were going, um, especially to make sure that if there was medical care that was needed, that they were seeking that and they had the, the ability to do that and to make the calls and to get the transportation. Um, again, there were uninsured adults in the home, so we needed to make sure that we found some low-cost medical care for that, those family members. And then, of course, the, um, again, the ongoing clinic communication with clinical teams, so important. We could have done this without the clinical team. And, um, again, the family had not told the, the clinical teams about um, the environmental situation in their home. So once we kind of all got on the same page about what that meant and what that is, it was easier for them to, to understand the full picture of their asthma. So yesterday I talked with the family, and I'm so excited that their home is still cockroach-free. Um, the asthmatic mom that had had the most... Um, she had the most ER visits, including multiple ambulance transports. Um, she actually has had no ER visits from May, since May of 2016. Um, family members report a better understanding of how to keep pests out of their home. And the parents of the asthmatic children report a better understanding of the role that environmental triggers play in their children's asthma. So, um, kind of the next few slides here, I just want to walk through the way that we approached this medication piece from a CHW perspective. We were using the pathways, um, the medication assessment pathways, and the medical home pathway. So these are methodical ways that a CHW can organize their service delivery. So we're going in, and when, you know, when we first kind of went in, there was a lot of, there was expired inhalers kind of sitting around. Um, nobody really had a good idea of um, kind of what each child was supposed to have. There were other kids using other inhalers that weren't prescribed to them. So kind of using the, these pathways to get a handle on that work. These are tools that we used. Again, asking them about are you having problems getting your medications? Do you have problems paying for medications? Going through each person, you know, that, that had asthma and talking with them about these pieces, um, this was, this is a really, really good way to do that. And these are in paper form, so you can take them with you in the family's file. And then, of course, a place to, as a CHW, kind of be recording what you're seeing, what medications they're using, the dose. Um, do they know what it's for, how many doses each day, and writing the client's response in there, using this also to communicate back to the clinical team or if there's skilled nursing visits. Um, you know, this could be left at the home for the skilled nurse who's coming in or the asthma nurse. Um, you know, whoever is doing that care for the family can be using this. It's just another perspective, and especially when you're a CHW and you're visiting the families on a sometimes on a weekly basis and you're talking with them, especially during this intervention, staying really, really close to that family. So, you know, we're making sure that everything is, is going smoothly. We've been, you know, they understood that this was an amazing opportunity that the University of Minnesota was giving them. And I understood that too, that this does not come around every day. So I felt super compelled to make sure this is all gonna work. And I was kind of the person that was holding all those pieces together. But as we moved through and the parents started to understand more and they started to see all the pieces, they really took charge and were very empowered um, 
to continue to make sure that this is, you know, that they're not going to get the cockroaches back and that they knew where they came from and they know how to do, to deal with it if they ever did come back. Um, and they also started, you know, doing a lot more things about chemicals in their home, fragrances, these cleaning solutions that were aggravating the kids, and all those types of things that just played this huge role in kind of closing that circle, they really started to understand that, and they started to say, no, we're not going to use those anymore. All right, so here's my contact information. Um, I am absolutely, email me. I'm really happy to talk about this. If you have other cases where families that you're working with have pest issues, there's a lot of things that you can do as a CHW to help the family identify, identify what the pest may be, how to get control of the pest, things that people can do on a daily basis to make sure that they're removing food and water, that you know all these things that cockroaches need to live from a CHW perspective, those types of that type of education can be delivered during, um, you know, during a visit. So I'm happy to talk with anybody, and we can take some questions. So, for anyone out there, we will be sending out um, a cop. Well, we'll be sending out a link to the recorded webinar after this is um, through, so you'll be able to see the slides and things again in case you came in late or missed it. Um, can you see if, if there anyone who has any questions is welcome to either type them in at this time. Um, so one question here from Carrie, Carrie Harris. Um, do you see CHWs working with pest control agencies in the future? Carrie, that's brilliant. Yes. Can you imagine if every pest control company had a CHW on staff that could go along with them, could help in times when they needed some translation services, could help with the education piece, they could help with a whole variety of things that go along people. And this family really honestly thought that by a pest company coming in and spraying, these cockroaches were going to be gone and their issue was going to be gone. And, you know, they did not understand that it's going to take multiple treatments to catch all of the live generations plus the cockroaches that are, you know, hatching. Um, so like this education piece, and it took many, many weeks to kind of work through those conversations with the family about this is not just a one-time thing. This is going to go on for a while and doing that education. But, wow, a pest company having CHWs. Carrie, I think you're on to something there. Um, and Cheryl asks, where can you get a copy of the safe cleaning for people with asthma handout? Um, Cheryl, if you want to send me an email, I can send you the link to that. Oh, I had a question. And that is, um, how do you know where to start when you see so many critical issues regarding healthy homes and the conditions that people are living in? Really good question. So when I go and start visiting a family, I have to somehow figure out what are my priorities here. What is the priority that is affecting the family or the children on a daily basis? In this case, um, it was this constant struggle with asthma, um, exacerbations, lost days of work, lost days of school, in this particular family, one of the dads actually ended up having to quit his job because their daughter had so many hospitalizations, and he just couldn't. One of them always had to stay home, so it was just easier for him. Um, he earned a little bit less than his wife, so it was easier for him to stay home and just be, you know, with her and, and care for her. So... Um, you know, kind of go, coming in, take, doing an assessment, meeting everyone who lives in the home, and then figuring out what is the priority in this case. Um, so Heather, I'm wondering how you help the family work through the shame aspect of their situation. Heather, that is such a good question. This family 
had so much shame. And in fact, the day that the mother approached me at the health fair, she was whispering because she didn't want people next to my table to hear her. Um, and at our first encounter her our first in-home visit she was in tears the majority of the visit and it still makes me like choke up a little bit just thinking about her and how she would struggled with this just getting the words out I have a cockroach problem in my home and she was worried about her kids going to friends homes and the parents would discover that they had a cockroach problem um, and you know we just kind of I encouraged her to talk with me and to just keep talking about it. And we found solutions for them um, as she was kind of talking through her fears and her embarrassment and her shame. Um, you know, as they started to see a reduction in the cockroach population, she kind of came out of that shame and she realized, okay, we can do this. Um, so really, honestly, I just kind of, encouraged her to talk with me, and um, she still gets emotional about it, but now it's sort of this emotion of this of the university team and our team helping her, and, um, you know, they're so internally grateful, but really, honestly, she would, they had a lot of shame, and it, um, it's, like I said, it still makes me nervous. It still makes me sad for her because I I remember how she was the first time she met me, and I now think about her, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, she's come so far. So a couple more. How do you know when a situation, either medical-related or environmental-related, is too big for you to handle yourself? And I'm wondering whether or not you've communicated directly back, directly with the health care providers for this family. Great question. So as a CHW, there's a lot of health education things that I can do with the family. Um, but most of the resource things, I am looking for referrals for them. I'm looking to make referrals for them. And in this particular case, I knew right away that I did not even need to do any identification of sticking, putting sticky traps out myself because I already saw roaches during the day. So I thought, oh, okay, we're just going to jump from like point one to point 10 because we can bypass everything in between we already need to go to that point um, and I saw that the infestation was so big that there's nothing that the family could have done by themselves to fix it at this point it needed professional treatment um, and yes yeah, so I did talk with the clinical team a couple times about what we were doing in the home and how this, what the, was going to be happening in the home. And then we also talked with a couple of the, um, one of the community clinics that's the no-cost clinic in Minneapolis, no-cost, low-cost clinic in Minneapolis, about um, seeing the brother. So, and then we talked with asthma nurses at the clinic. With that, if there are no questions, let's give it, just a minute here. And if there are no more questions, um, we will sign off for today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we will let you know when the link is posted and hope you enjoyed this webinar. Thank you very much, Megan. Thank you, everybody. And feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or you have clients that are working through situations like this. I am absolutely happy to help.